We're talking wool knits today. Mm -hmm. As you can see behind me, I have a whole pile back there of the things that I've made and I've just pulled out um, some highlights because what I've constituted as a success, a win, a great make is if I get a lot of use out of it. So these are behind me are the ones that I wear the most and they range from beginner type makes to, well, I mean, not really more advanced. I don't really take on very hard projects necessarily, but they vary in my skill level, my personal skill level. So for example, actually the first one is what I'm wearing today. This is Wow, this isn't the first sweater that I've ever made, but it was definitely one of the one of the first ones. But this one has stuck around, and I think it's actually a really lovely sweater. So this is a Wool in the Gang kit. It was the Big Time Jumper, and it's in moss stitch throughout. Very warm. It's made with Lil Heel the Wool. It's, I don't think they sell it anymore. It's recycled yarn, but you know, it's actually pretty soft considering it is a little bit scratchy at times. So, you know, I would wear like a long sleeve shirt under this. And, you know, in general, I think I did a really good job making this um, considering my skill level back, I wanna say, when was it, 2018, 2019? It's still in one piece. I think that sums it up. <laughs> there are areas where I look at it now and I'm just like, yeah, I would have done a better job now. Like the seaming on the arms, and yeah, I just the arm, just the arms in general, you can kind of see that it's kind of asymmetrical a little bit or too tight around the armpits, but nobody really notices except for me, I'm pretty sure. <laughs> and yeah, overall, I would say that this one is a winner. So this one here, it's another wool in the game kit. <sighs> I, I purchased a lot of wool in the game kits. This is the Hotline sweater. It's made with their, their mohair. What is that mohair called? Wool in the Gang's mohair. I really cannot remember what mohair it is. Hopefully it will dawn on me in a couple of minutes, but uh, this is their Hotline sweater and it's a really nice oversized fit. It definitely stretched out a lot after I made it, um, after I like washed it. I mean, that's what blocking is for, right? It's trying to like form it a little bit larger. Like in particular, the sleeves stretched out so much, which is why I kind of perpetually just roll them. Um, so whenever I'm wearing it, I kind of like to have them rolled up in like a quarter sleeve length. You know, normally sweaters, the pearl side is the wrong side. And I actually really love how they used um, it for the right side this time around. I really love that look. Not many people do, I find, um, which I think is a shame. The collar has stretched out quite a bit, but you know, I've worn this in a video, I think, and I think I looked cute, I don't know. But I think this one is a winner for sure. I wear it all the time. I literally just wore it like two days ago, I think. This one I started, I think, yeah, right when quarantine started happening. So uh, in March of 2020, I, so a year ago, I made this sweater. This is Petite Knits. Um, I should probably know this. Oh yeah, this is Petite Knits Caramel Sweater. See, the other day I was saying that I never really work with smaller needles, but come on, this one's pretty small. I think that this, you know, I don't know off the top of my head, but I wanna say it was probably like four millimeter, four and a half. That looks really good. I can knit sweaters that aren't chunky for sure. But yeah, this is their Feeling Good yarn. It's really soft. It does really well, I think. Um, and when I wash it, because let's be honest, I really don't, I don't wash my knits every after every wear. I feel like that that would really just like stretch them out and make them a little, um, yeah, I just, I worked really hard on these. I wanna preserve them as much as possible. And the more that you wash things, I feel like the lesser in quality they become. Um, so I wash my knits every two weeks or so, and yeah, this one's holding up pretty well. Uh, I really like the neck here. It has like a really nice thick turtleneck. So that's how I like to wear it, um, because otherwise it would be like over my mouth. But, uh, yeah, the thing that I remember about this one is I didn't have enough yarn to finish the sleeves at the correct length. So they ended up when I first finished the sweater, they were very short, but you know, they've since stretched out in time. And I think the Feeling Good yarn also helped with that because it is a little bit stretchier. 
Um, very cute. I love the two by two rib detail. And I love the color as well. It's really just a classic sweater, something that I can really just put over everything, which is why I wear this thing all the time. All right. So then the next one, we're going into uh, a bit of summer knits, like one of the only summer knits that I've ever found that I enjoyed or thought was successful. She doesn't look like much right now. Like literally, I don't even feel like I look like I could fit into this thing, but I do. It's a very like cropped, um, version of the camisole number two by my favorite things knitwear but i really love the thought that went into this design i think that uh, the woman behind my favorite things knitwear i think that she really thinks through construction of garments so well and i just really love especially around the boob detail like how body forming it is like it it fits so well to the body i think that's really great and I mean, I use some cheapo cotton yarn with this one. Um, the only thing that I would say is for such a small garment, I think it just took me a lot of time. And I, <laughs> I, I mean, I'm an Aries, so I'm very much like get things done. I wanna finish projects. I love the rush and the, the feeling of finishing a project, which I know is a bad habit. And I'm gonna, tr I'm trying to be more, uh, yeah, I guess slow. And I am, I am. At least I get the wear out of everything. But anyway, so you can kind of see how this has kind of been worn a little bit. And I do plan on making another one this summer. I'm excited to give it another go and also lengthen it because I did, I think I followed someone's hack on how to crop it. And I do really like the cropped look as well, but I think, you know, making it just a tad bit longer might benefit me. And I do remember that I did crop it because I wanted it to just, be finished faster so I could wear it. But I think it's cute, I really like it. Okay, so the next one is probably one of my all time favorites. At least I think I nailed it with the color and the buttons too, I'm really happy with. So cardigan number seven is definitely one of my favorite makes so far. I think the color, the, the button detail, the, um, yeah, just like the fit of it. I love how like big the sleeves are. They're nice and like puffy. Um, I think she did a really great job with this pattern. And I would say that it's definitely a beginner pattern. Like she, she labels it as a beginner pattern. And I think that's a fair estimate because um, I think it's pretty easy as long as you are comfortable knitting in the round because, or, you know, doing raglan stitching is what I meant to say because you don't actually knit in the round with this one. You are working on circular needles and making increases around the sweater. And then uh, eventually you'll uh, knit the ribbing on the body and for the collar too. So I really love this one. And um, I used Drops Air for this one. So I work with this fiber a lot too, actually. And I also did one strand of mohair from Hobby yarn. So it's, it was like their Diablo yarn, so it was very economical. I would say it's not the softest mohair. Maybe I might knit it again and go with a like higher quality yarn because it's definitely not as soft as it could be, but it looks very soft. Yeah, I'm really happy with this one and I wear it a lot, so. Don't show the back of my head because what the heck is this? For the next one, I'm really exposing myself because look at this. <laughs> like I haven't even, oh God, hold on. Let me just do that really quick. It's not gonna make too much of a difference because it's throughout the entire dang sweater, but you know, that's fine. You don't need to know. Well, you you know. See, this is the problem of not having to really leave your house <laughs> because, you know, nobody sees the inside of my sweater vest. Only I see the inside of my sweater vest. And you know what? It doesn't bother me. These ends don't bother me. You know, that's, that'll do. Okay, so here's my sweater vest. <laughs> Here, I'm gonna actually show you the inside. You're gonna be very shocked. Oh my God. <laughs> okay, you know what? It's not that bad. And you know, you probably wouldn't want to weave on, weave in, you probably wouldn't want to eat. 
And you know, you probably wouldn't want to weave in those ends either. Um, but I'm really especially proud of this one and I do wear it even though it has all of these crazy strands. I just tuck them in and I don't let anyone see them until now. But I'm really proud of this one because this was inspired by what I would imagine made well to sell. Yeah, I don't know, the stripes and the colors, I feel like I've seen it before. So originally it was like with Madewell in mind, I wanted to kind of like do some kind of a dupe and this actually turned into a pattern. So this is prototype number one for the classic V-neck vest. I since took the uh, pattern and, you know, made the V-neck a little bit deeper and, you know, kind of made it a little bit slimmer, but I do really like this uh, design as well. I just thought for my pattern, the one that I wanted to release, I wanted it to be just a tad form fitting um, instead of so boxy like this. But yeah, I like the stripes. The only thing that I would say is that I didn't account for the fact that, you know, yeah, here you can see it better. The distribution of the stripes, I should have thought that through because I worked it from back or I worked it from front to back and I didn't really think through that I might need to switch out the stripes so that they don't really line up on the sides. That's the only thing that I'm not really happy with with this piece, but again, if only people see the one side of me, then it doesn't really matter. And yeah, it, it went on to become a pattern. So if you like this, you could also make it. It's linked in the description as well. And this is made with Feeling Good Yarn by Wool and the Gang also. So finally, one of my most, most, most recent makes, like freshly off the needles, is this beautiful piece right here. This is um, the North Sweater by Hip Knit Shop. I did a video on beginner circular knitting, and you might notice that that was also this sweater. So when I first started this sweater, I you know recorded a little bit about the um, the construction and how to join in the round for the bottom piece, the bottom half. And then this sweater was actually worked from the bottom up. So instead of doing raglan increases from the top down, I was doing decreases from the bottom up. And that was just, a, it just blew my mind. <laughs> this is something completely new to me. Um, I really enjoyed doing that kind of construction. This sweater turned out much larger than I actually imagined that it would. I thought it was gonna be much more form fitting. So I'm actually pleasantly surprised about that. And I really love the twisted rib detail here. I love the color, the color is beautiful. I think it is such a rich, beautiful color. Um, the wool is really soft. The mohair is also very soft. It adds to that softness. And I also like the color choice that I went with. So the hip wool is in gingerbread and the hip mohair is in chestnut. I would say that for my first time knitting uh, from the bottom up, it was a success. There are some areas of the decreases where it's a little, it's not as tight as I would like it. I have some gaps here that I would need to kind of repair. I think overall, I'm extremely happy with how it turned out. Definitely with the finished product. I will say that there, the written pattern that I was following was a little confusing at times or a little incomplete, but in general, I think, um, well, the product obviously turned out really great. I did knit a size medium and I was not expecting it to be this large. So maybe their patterns come out a little bit larger or run on the larger side. Not really sure. Um, but in all, I'm very happy with that. So I'm okay with it. <laughs> so that should do it from me on some of my favorite makes. Thank you so much for watching guys. If you enjoy knitting and DIY content as much as I do, then please hit the like and the subscribe button for more content like this. And uh, if you have any questions about any of the patterns or the pieces that I showed you, um, I'll also be replying to any of your comments in the comment section down below. Next week, I'm thinking that maybe we will go through, I just got a brand new storage system. So I was thinking that next week we can go through my knit stash or my yarn stash and show you guys what I have and maybe a little bit of an organization as well. Um, and then I also have other projects coming up for spring. So um, be sure to subscribe if you're interested in that. And I will, hey, don't bite me.
Thank you so much for watching and I'll speak to you again real soon.